Yes, sir. Tony Toka! Hey, yo, I am hip hop. Look through the lens. To już 10 lat, od kiedy legendarny DJ Tony Touch, współtwórca serii Lyricist Lounge Danny Castro oraz nieżyjący już Bibo i Voodoo Ray postanowili ruszyć z cyklem wtorkowych imprez. Cyklem, który tętni do dziś, stanowiąc enklawę hip-hopowej klasyki dla całego Nowego Jorku. Musieliśmy tam zajrzeć, musieliśmy też porozmawiać z pomysłodawcą całej serii. We are standing in the middle of Toka Tuesday's party, near 10 years old. How do you feel with the anniversary? We're standing with Danny Castro, one of, one of the co-founders. Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels great. I'm like we've been doing it for, like you said, almost 10 years. It's gonna be 10 years in October next month. Uh, you know. Myself, Tony Touch, Voodoo Ray, rest in peace, uh, and also like Zulu Jeff. We've been doing this for 10 years, and it's amazing to have a party like a, a great hip hop, good music party for like 10 years on a weekly basis. We weekly basis executive. I mean. Like, you know, con like every year, I mean, every week, I'm like tripping right now, but yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know. Consistently. And this, yeah, and it's like, like uh, you know. we also had in Warsaw like parties in the middle of the week, Yeah. but they were also like running for one year, two years. I also ran one uh, that made like two and a half year. Yeah. So how do you manage to keep it going for 10 years and still have a lot of people, a lot of uh, rap legends coming? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible, like the, the energy. I think the way we did it is because we had such a strong, uh, a strong team that created this energy that people just seem to like love and like you know yearn every single week because like that's what new york city always been about you know like new york city from the beginning like you know like when hip-hop began even before hip-hop you know when it was disco or whatever the nightlife has always been really rich so like after generations went by People were always fiending for good music and a good a good place where you could dance, where you could have a good time, where you can meet new people, you know, like, and just having, like, just really cool folks that just love good music, you know what I mean? So that's what it's all about, and that's what we always brought to the table. So we came up with a strong formula. I mean, of course, we have, like, the one and only Tony Touch, which is legendary in itself and then we will always have guest DJs come every week so we always keep it fresh you know so I think that's a big part of it another big part of it is like we always stayed in tune with the dancers because the dancers is like the the heart of a of a party you know so being that Voodoo Ray was a professional dancer um, he always emphasized that we have to have dancers at our party and we have to like you know look out for them because like that's what that was that's what keeps the party going you know what I mean so like we make sure that we maintain that and um, and also just have like cool folks that are in the industry whether they are artists you know producers or in the entertainment business like you know we just create this nice good mixture Of, of folks that come all the time. So people love it because we're like one of the last of the Mohicans that are still doing it, you know? And that's what it is. And looking back on the whole 10 years, do you remember someone's special party, on one special moment from some party that like hit your mind and is theirs yeah, all the uh, time? Well, we had so many different moments that were like mind-blowing and monumental, you know, like, I mean, just to speak for a few, like we had, you know, Grandmaster Flash, 
come and DJ, and it was amazing because this was around the time that uh, you know that show on Netflix came out. Uh, I forgot the name. The of Get it. Down. The Get Down. So it was even more popular because they were like, you know, the Get Down was out. So like yeah, the young people were on the vibe to get go to the roots. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you know, so it brought out a nice combination of people. It brought like a lot of different generations of people that. You know, people that never heard of Grandmaster Flash, the younger generation to the older generation that was there when he was DJing, you know? So that was amazing. That was groundbreaking. I mean, we had like so many different incredible DJs get on. Like we recently had DJ Jazzy Jeff again this year, like a few months ago. That was just out of this world like we had so many different people come out for that um you know we had q-tip we had the list goes on and on and on like we had like i would say majority of the top djs in the world uh you know we also get like international djs that come out and play with us as well from different parts of the, the world So it's it's just a it's just a humbling and honoring experience for me to like just meet all these different DJs and to like be a part of this incredible movement that we started, you know. And you also co-found the uh, Lyricist Lounge, yeah, uh, which was a brand of parties and also compilations released by Rockers, yes, with incredible lineup. Yes, yes. And with hits like Mos the Pharaoh and Nadok, which the song is still going in the clubs uh -huh. all over the world. I think in Poland we hear it all the time in the clubs. Yeah. So how do you look back on this initiative and uh, what it brought to the table of hip hop? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I love the fact that we we are part of hip hop history. Like, you know, uh, myself and my partner Aunt, Aunt Marshall started back in 1991. And we started by doing open mic sessions in New York City, and then it evolved to like making compilation albums, to doing national tours, and you know like, and then having a show on MTV, the Lyricist Lounge show. So it's like, it feels it's it's just incredible that we started from like teenagers, and you know we still we still like. Uh, bringing out new artists you know like that's what we've always been about and also being the bridge between like veteran artists and new artists and bringing them together so that's what we want to continue with our legacy and you'll hear more about lyricist lounge in the near future because uh we have a few things in the works so definitely okay so, okay so we're writing and at the end what uh, would be the perfect birthday present for 10 years of Toka Tuesdays. Oh man, a perfect present for Toka Tuesdays? Yeah, for 10th birthday. 10, 10 year anniversary? Wow, that's a that's a crazy question. Um, I would say like, if we, if we were to have like, all like, I would say, okay, the wish list would be to have Like say like of course Grandmaster Flash again, uh, you know um, Q-Tip. Um, I would love to have DJ Premier DJ with Pete Rock together because like we done I done that in the past, but it would be dope to have it at Toka Tuesdays and then have like just a bunch of surprise artists come through, you know like Busta Rhymes, Red Man, and like you know, whoever else, like, just come and pop up and just hang out and then jump on the mic because that's what always makes it exciting, like, and it's happened in the past too, so, I mean, look out for the documentary, it's gonna be amazing, um, and, you know, as we doing our 10-year mark, I'm looking forward to it, and anybody that comes through, I'm gonna be appreciative about it, but, yeah, the wish list, Just whoever then come never came and come to represent for us. You know what I mean? Which is not that many people, but 
you know, that's what it is. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, my name is Riz22 Robinson, and uh, I'm doing a painting tonight. Uh, it's a tribute to the 9-11 victims and uh, everything that happened with 9-11 in USA. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I decided uh, to go with uh, Angel, uh, which represents uh, the people and the heart of the city, the spirit of the city. And uh, the eyes represent the public, you know, the power of the people. And then, of course, you have the smoke and buildings. Uh, of course, you know, it's far from being incomplete, but, but you, you pretty much get a clear visual as it is. Yes. I have uh, teardrops that pour into rivers in a whirlpool, which represent a portal, a gateway, in which all the lives and angels uh, went into at her feet. Exactly. 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 Still got a lot of work to do, though. I'm, yes, I'm Riz22 Robinson. That's right. Uh, painted for Tony Touch. Uh, it's yellow. 25 different locations in Manhattan. Definitely. This is when are you attending Talk of Tuesdays? Talk of Tuesdays every Tuesday. Every Tuesday uh, from here on out and for the past 10 years. Why is it special to you? Uh, it's very special to me. Uh, it was uh, actually one of the first uh, tribes, you know, not just parties, but I would say tribes that I had ever joined, uh, where it's more than just a party, it's a family. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a portal for unity. That's all I can really say about this party. It's, it's, special, it's more special than most other parties. You know, you have this commercial way this is true authenticity. True authenticity at its height. This is the foundation for hip hop. This is the foundation for everything. It comes right out of here, Toka Tuesdays and Funk Box. Yes. 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 Impreza Toka Tuesdays dała nam potężny zastrzyk hip hopowej energii. Spotkaliśmy przy barze legendy jak Planetasia, czyli Fame z MOP, porobiliśmy wywiady, to tam dotarliśmy też do samego źródła, wpadając na ojca hip hopu DJ Akul Herka we własnej osobie. Nie wierzyliśmy własnym oczom, gdy mogliśmy zamienić z nim kilka słów, a także popatrzeć jak po 45 latach od swojej pierwszej imprezy nadal z uwagą przygląda się tańczącym bojom. Thank you.